Hey everyone, I have a quick definition I want us to go over before we look at our next example, and that is the idea of a level curve, which, that, which we've actually seen in some of our previous examples. So we say the level curve of a function of two variables, like z is equal to f of x comma y, the level curves are the curves created by taking our output variable like z and setting it equal to some constant value like k. So we do this for varying values of k, or just set z equal to these different constant values to create these different level curves of our function. And so then if we look at the sketch of these level curves in the xy plane, labeled with their corresponding k or constant values, that creates what we call a contour map for our function. And contour maps are actually something most of us have seen before. If you've ever looked at a topographical map or a weather map, those are examples of these contour maps. And so if you look at a topographical map, you can see we're looking at our uh, surface from above, looking down onto it. And what we see are all these lines and what these lines are labeled with are different elevation values. So as long as you're traveling along the same line, you are staying at the same elevation. But if you want to go from one line to the next, you're going to have to change elevation. And so this is helping us create the picture of um, how tall our object is and also how uh, close our level curves are to each other relative to their differences in height or these different k values will give us an idea of how steep that surface is. If we have a large change in k values without much space between our two level curves, and that means in order to take this large vertical change, which is the difference between these k or z values, we have to take a small step. And that means this small step has to gain us a lot of elevation, so it's got to be a pretty steep hill we are climbing. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of creating a contour map together and then using that contour map to identify the surface or describe the surface. And so the function of two variables that we're interested in creating this contour map for is f of x comma y is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And we're going to create this contour map using these varying level curves for these given k values of 0, 1, 4, and 9. All right, so to generate our contour map, first we have to create these four level curves for our different k values. And so let's go ahead and start with k equals 0. Well, that'll give us the equation 0 is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, or 0 is equal to x squared plus y squared. But what is the graph of 0 equals x squared plus y squared? Well, it's actually going to be the single point at the origin 0, 0. So now what if we set k equal to 1? Then our function gets set equal to 1, and we get 1 is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And if we kind of rearrange this, we can write this as 1 is equal to x squared plus y squared. We're just rearranging it by eliminating the radical through squaring both sides of the equation. And so our next level curve is going to correspond to k equals 4, and that's going to give us the equation after rearranging things of 16 is equal to x squared plus y squared. And to finish this off, we have the last level curve corresponding to k equals 9. Plugging that into our function for the output gives us 9 is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. But if we square things and move things around like we have for the other ones, we get 81 is equal to x squared plus y squared. And so now we have enough information to draw the contour map for our surface. All right, so we mentioned how this first level curve, when we set k equals to 0, gave us 0 is equal to x squared plus y squared. But the only point that satisfies that equation is the origin 0, 0. So the single point corresponds to our level curve when k is equal to 0. All right, so our next level curve corresponds to k is equal to 1. And that gave us the equation 1 is equal to x squared plus y squared. We should recognize that as the equation for our unit circle. The intersection of the z equals 1 plane with our surface is going to generate this circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. So next, if we move up to our next level curve at the plane when z is equal to 4, we see where that plane intersects our surface. And that curve of intersection is going to give us the circle described by x squared plus y squared equals 16. But we should recognize that as the circle of radius 4. And so if we finish our contour map off by plotting this last level curve, which gave us the equation 81 is equal to x squared plus 9, that'll give us a circle of radius 9, which will be hard to fit on here, but should look 
something roughly like this. And this corresponded to when k was equal to 9. And so with this contour map, we can actually visualize what this three-dimensional surface is going to look like roughly. And so when we are at the uh, plane z equals 0, or kind of right on the xy plane at the origin, we have a single point. And then when we take a step up in altitude to the plane when z is equal to 1, we are on a circle of radius 1. When we take uh, three steps up to when z is equal to 4, we are on a circle of radius 4. When we take five more steps up, when we are at z is equal to 9, we are then on a circle of radius 9. And so what we can see from that is for every step 1 that we take up, the radius of the circle that we are on is increasing by that exact same step size. So there's a linear relationship between the radius and the height that we are at, and what that creates is a cone. And so from this contour map, we can kind of see or visualize that this three-dimensional surface is going to represent a cone. We could look at some more vertical traces to help us verify that, or we could take our equation and rewrite it as z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, or z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and from that, also recognize that, hey, this is one of those common quadric surfaces, and this quadric surface represents a cone. Again, just another good example of how we can use contour maps to help us figure out how to sketch a three-dimensional surface or identify a three-dimensional surface.